So here's what we have so far. Okay, and now we're gonna make the screwdriver. So first I'm gonna show you how to make a little more high-tech one. There's an article on this and uh, I basically simplified it because it required a lot of stuff. So first I got some Roacel uh, foam, you know, it's a core board and you get the 71, that's the most dense. Now this is expensive. The smallest I could get was a 12 inch by 24 inch sheet. I mean, I could probably make a thousand drivers out of that. And that was 50 something dollars, okay? So, you know, just give it to your friends or if other people need it, you can give it. You have plenty. The other thing I got is that I got uh, unidirectional carbon fiber. Uh, it's like a cloth, all right? And uh, this is the 1.5 ounce per square yard. Now, this was cheap. I got a, a foot of this for $6. And again, that's more than a lifetime supply. All right, so let me show you what, what I do. And I got both of these from CST Sales again. So let me show you what I do. So what you got to do is you got to make a groove in it. And in the article, they show setting up a jig. And that's great, you know, you should do that. But I'm too lazy and I also have incredibly limited space. Just a tiny little workshop, so I didn't want to do that. So here's my just simple crude approach. I have a Dremel and this is one of the wheels they had. And I said, hey, that's almost perfect. I move this once or twice, I can make a nice slot. So I actually just put this in my little mini drill press like that. And then I had a block here I set up to get it the right height. And I just did it by hand. I just held the little piece and I went like that. Then I moved it slightly and I did it twice. Okay, yes, pretty primitive. Probably better off setting up a jig, but I don't care, it worked. So here we go. So here's a channel that it made in one of them. There you go, you see? Now you're ready to go. Now on the next part, what they do is they vacuum bag it. Now this is probably the best way to do it, but again, I don't want to get a vacuum in a bag and deal with all this stuff. So all I did is, here's how I do it. So I cut off a piece of this, and you gotta be careful with this because, um, you know, it spreads out. I mean, it's separate little things here. So what I did is I put a piece of tape here on for the piece I'm gonna use. I put a piece of tape here, then you can see I actually cut the tape just to keep the fibers nice, otherwise you can see they start coming out. Also keep the plastic on the back because the glue won't stick to that. You might think it does, but it, does, it won't. So instead of vacuum bagging everything, all I do then, now that I have it cut out, is I just got some five minute epoxy, mix it up, brushed it on here, okay? And then I just went like this and went bang. I just pushed it down and then I let it dry. Then when that was done, I did the other side and let it dry, make another little strip, okay? Then finally, what I did is I have my trusty piece of hardwood and it fits perfectly in here, okay? So all I did then is I took it, you know, the plastic side up and I just shoved it in there. I don't want to bend this one up, but you can just shove it in there. You can see that. And uh, I clamped it there to just hold it really tight. And then I let that dry, all right? So I think that worked out okay. So after I did that, here's what I ended up with, all right? So you can see I got it on the inside and on the two sides. Now I left the top. Now again, what they show in the article is to set a little jig. You can take this edge off around it. But uh, again, I'm too lazy with the jig, so I didn't do that. So once I get it to this point, now you can just slice off, uh, you know, the hubs here as you need them, okay? You can just slice them off. And in fact, on this one, I've already sliced off about five of them. So the only nice part about doing this is once you got this, you can make a dozen hubs, okay? So to slice it, I just get a nice sharp razor blade, all right? And I like to, the screws are about a 16th inch thick, so I'm going to make it, you know, about an 8 inch thick. I probably really shouldn't do this on camera, but I'll do one here. If I mess it up, you can just redo it. So you can kind of see that, uh, you know, take it easy. Just kind of rock the blade, and then you'll come down to the bottom. And make sure you get a nice sharp new blade. Whoops, and of course it fell on the floor. Ah. Okay, so there you go. And let's see, oh yeah, that looks good. Just about the right thickness, looks good. All right, so now the next part is to drill the holes. And that part's a little tricky. So what I'm gonna do with that is I'm actually gonna put it on my wood again. I'm gonna make the two dots and I'm gonna drill the holes. Now the screws, here's the screws, okay. They're 090 screws, 0090 screws. You can see I got these from micro fasteners and there they are. All right, now, now as I showed you, I cut the head off and I flatten them. You need a tap, micro fasteners also sells the tap. Here's their 0090 tap. That's what makes the threads. 
okay? So in order to drill this out now, 0090 is about 0.060, all right? So I want to drill, I actually want it slightly less than 0.060 uh, because I want to make sure there's room for the threads there. So a 53 is 0 0.060, a number 53 drill. So I'm going to use a 54, that's about 0 0.055. Okay, so I got to drill two holes here. I'm going to do that first and then I got to, what's important is to make sure after you get this hole drilled, put, put wire in there so you can see exactly where it comes out. Those have to be lined up and that's important. All right, and as before, I'm going to use my little orange marker to make the little dots. It's pretty simple. You just get one close to the bottom of the leg is, you know, not too close. And then you get one higher up for the, uh, that's for the wire. And I'll show you that. So I'm going to drill it and I'll come back. Okay, a couple things. The 090 screws are actually about 0.050 inch. So for the drill, I used the number 60, which is about 0.040. You want a little bit less. So I drilled the holes, okay, we got two on this side here and then one on the other side. I already threaded the other side. So I'll show you this side. So here's the tap, here's the last one I have to do. So again, don't go too small on the holes because if it forces it, you're going to split this and then you'll have to redo it over. With the 60 drill, it seems to be just good because it just threads in there really easy. I just started it, look at that, it's already going and then make sure it's straight, okay, in both directions, and then just gently twist in, you see? And now it's coming out on the inside. I don't go too far in, you don't wanna overdo it. So I just go in about like that, and then just gently back out, and now you're ready to go. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is, now if you had the jig in the article, they, you know, taper this off, but again, I don't have that, so, or, uh, too lazy to make it really so I'm just gonna cut it here twice okay so let me do that I'm gonna do that stop the camera for a minute okay so now I just angled the corners a little bit and so now I want to cover this with the uh, carbon fiber here and this time I don't even bother with five minute epoxy I'm just gonna get a little bit of Loctite and I rub it on here I do each one separately you, you could try to do them both but I like to do them separate so I'm just gonna smear some glue on there. Okay, let me get a toothpick here. All right, I don't want too much, take off the excess, there you go. Whoops, I'm out of screen. So I'm just smearing a little on here, it does soak in, and then I'm just gonna press it down. Right on here, let's do it over here. I'm gonna press it down, there you go. And uh, just let it sit there. You can hold it for a couple of seconds. Well, it starts to set, whoops. So here we go, there you go. And we'll give it a few seconds, all right? So then I'll cut it out and then I'll do it on the other side and I'll show you that. So I'm gonna let that dry a few minutes. Okay, so I did the other side. And then what I do is I just get a pair of scissors and cut it close, you know, just, just cut it out. All right, and then I'm gonna do this side. Whoop, and just came right off. Okay, and then you'll have, you know, there'll be plastic on here, but believe it or not, that you'll just be able to take the plastic right off. So let me see if I can grab it. Just gotta get it, and then it'll come off. I need my glasses for this so I can see what I'm doing. Um, or did it already come off? Actually, when it fell off, there you go, there's the plastic, it came off. Okay? So now I'll just trim it a little bit there to fit it in, sand it a little bit. So this makes it nice and strong. I'll just trim it off. Then the last thing you got to do is soak it with CA and I'll show you that. All right, the last thing I'm going to do is soak it with a little thin CA because that'll harden everything up. Now have your toothpick handy so you can, you know, you don't want to really seal the holes up even though you're going to have to redo those later anyway. All right, so I'm going to hit it with a drop or two. And most of it will just soak right in. And then in the excess, I'm going to just tap out. Then I'm just going to go over to my holes quick. And uh, there you go. That looks good. That looks good. Here's another one. That looks good. There you go. So it's pretty wet. I'll let it dry thoroughly. Then I'll pull out the pin. And then we can um, 
put the you have to once this dries thoroughly you get you got to re-tap it again okay and then you're pretty much done we're ready to put it on the shaft so I'm gonna let this dry all right so I let the soaked uh, you know CA driver dry and let it dry for a good hour okay let it really firm up then you got to get your tap again and do the holes again because they'll fill up a little bit now you'll find out if you sealed any of the holes forget it you got problems it's hard to even re-drill it out so make sure you use your toothpick to keep those holes open and then for me it was easy to just run this through again all right <clears throat> i put in the high and low pitch screws i didn't put in the spring one yet i have to drill that so then I drilled out the middle with a 0.9 millimeter drill, just about, uh, it's a tight fit that way on this 0.039 uh, uh, inch tubing, okay? Now here's the next thing you gotta do. Then you gotta take your driver, and uh, whoops, where did I put it down? This is what happened, oh, here it is. <laughs> this is what happens when you get a hold there. And um, so you gotta put that in, all right? So put in the high and low pitch screws, then put this in, and what you got to do is you have to, if needed, sand that. You have to make sure the bar sits right in the middle of the two screws. And I already did it, so it's, it's ready to go. Actually, it was originally like this. It was a little below like that when I started. So what I did then is I took it out, and I, I put a little wire in the other way just to brace it. And then I very lightly sanded it. would find very lightly sanded it, okay, till eventually I got it to the point where... It just sat perfect and it sat right in. Um, I don't have my glasses on, that's the problem here. There you go. So, what I was saying was I sanded it so it sits right in the middle there. Okay, like that. So now we're pretty much ready to go. So, the next part is um, you still have to adjust the ends here, but first we're going to make the little holders. Okay, for that. And I've shown you this before, but I'll show you again anyway. In this case, it's 3 32nd wire. You can probably see it looks a little yellowish because I rubbed crayon on it, so this doesn't stick to it. Uh, I've also done it with brass tubing here. I, did, I couldn't find any wire at the time, so here's one I did on brass tubing, and I already soaked this with CA and all of that. So, then I just uh, get a piece of uh, tissue, all right? Usually medium weight white tissue is fine. I just use stuff that's leftover or crappy from kits and um, you know you get it on the wire and the secret is to always pull it outward because that'll make it keep it tight and up against the wire and you got to get the lip going okay and I'm sorry if I'm off screen there and I think I got it so there you go we already got it going and I just cut a piece a few inches long this is enough for plenty and maybe an inch wide now on things like the F1R you want to save weight so there, you're just going to, I make it as small as possible, maybe a uh, half inch wide or something like that. So then I'm going to hit it with the Ambroid, and I like to get it in there and on the edge, because you sort of want to try to get the edge down. I'm just holding it while I get all the Ambroid going. And uh, there you go. Now I'm going to just finish the roll. There, you see the glue coming. Here we go. And uh, let's try to smooth it down until eventually it sticks. Now also what you should do is spin the wire to make sure it didn't <laughs> glue there and we're fine as far as that goes. So there you go, that looks good. You can smooth it down and make sure the glue held and everything and it looks good. So that's it. Now normally what I would do <coughs> is I would let it stick, see, uh, I would soak it with the CA next. So let it stick halfway off and then soak it with the CA all right, but for the props, I don't do that because I want to insert the hub first and then do the whole thing in one shot. I think it comes out better that way. All right, so I'm going to let this dry and I'll get to the next part. All right, so I have the tissue tubes cut off. You just cut them off by, you know, hold the razor blade against the tube and then roll it. And make sure you use a designated razor blade for that because it's going to wear it down the edge like this one I'm using here, actually. And then usually what I do now, I'm trying to make this part where it, it, it actually goes in and, and then this keeps it centered in the tube. I like doing it this way. And I usually do that with my little top hat bender as I already showed you, but I'm sure some of you are going, well, I don't have that, plus you can't get it anymore. So let me just show you, there's always another way to do it, okay? And you could do jigs and stuff. I know if you're a machinist, you, you can do that. You'll laugh at this, but I'm just trying to show you if you don't have any equipment and just another way to do it. So what I do is I made the bend, as I showed you before, 
Okay, and then I, let me raise this up a little bit. And then I slid the razor blade in and I just want about an eighth inch on the end. So then I'm gonna grab it with my pliers and make sure I got it good. And then, whoop, nope, that didn't. So this might take more than one take here. Let me get it in there. There you go, I got it. And now I'm just gonna bend it. And there we are. That's enough so I can finish the rest by hand, you see? So let me make sure everything's flat and now I can straighten that out. And I'm gonna squeeze this. I mean, it is better to do it in a top hat bender, but you can do it this way. That's all I'm trying to show you. Okay, so there you go. So this is what I use to go into the tubing. Now, of course, I'll play with this a little bit, make sure it's nice and square, that's important, okay? And then I'll show you the next part. All right, so I'm bending the wire here for the prop shafts, and here's one, okay? This is ready to go, this is what it looks like in the end, and you gotta make sure it's really nice and square there and ready to go. Now, I'm gonna make the other one, but I'm just gonna show you a problem I've had with .020 wire, all right? Now when you're doing thinner wire, like F1D you're using 0.01, F1R I'm using 0.009, you could bend it 90 degrees like I showed you and then squeeze it down and it's fine. I've noticed with 0.020 wire though that sometimes it, it tends to break a lot because it can't deal with that sharper bend, okay? So an easy way to get around this is instead of using these flat pliers, this is where I make the sharp bend on for the F1R, which is fine, that works fine. I'm gonna use needle nose pliers, I'm gonna use round Okay, because if that way, if it's slightly rounded, then when you bend it the rest of the way, it's not going to be, um, and I did that a little too close. Let me just start that again because I wasn't paying attention. So anyway, I want to make sure I have enough left there. So I'm going to use a little bit of round nose pliers, you see, and now we'll get the bend going Go up to about 90 degrees. And it's hard to tell the difference, but it's just very slightly rounded now. Okay, then I'll do my next part, which is to squeeze it and get the flat nose pliers in there and then squeeze it the rest of the way down. You just got to play with it till you catch it like that. And now I just squeezed it the rest of the way. There you go. And you might be able to see this is a little bit bigger, but that's fine. So now it's nice and rounded and this way you can check under a magnifying glass and see if there's any cracks or splits. If there are, then you're going to have problems, but this looks good. So that's a way to get around it. Just use the round and, you know, don't do much. You're not making a loop. You just want to round it slightly and then it doesn't seem to split as much. All right, let me show you the next part. So now I got the wire made and then I carefully checked it to make sure everything is square. Then I'm going to take a piece of 16, uh, I'm sorry, this is actually 332nd rounded balls. It was a spar I was using and I know it fits into the tube. Check that. And then what I'm going to do is carefully try to push it in, all right, so that this wire is in the middle. And you also got to make sure it's square in two directions. I usually do this very slowly, and I take my time. There you go. And uh, I'm going to keep pushing. You really want to keep it straight as you can. All right. Hey, that came out pretty good. So you just want to push it in enough so that the bottom is flush with the ball, so like that, or even a little over, that's okay, we can always fix that. So the next thing to do is check it carefully. Oh, look at that, you really wanna make sure it's square, and also in this direction, right? It's gotta be straight in that direction. I'm sorry, <laughs> in that direction too. I hope that was on film, I wasn't paying attention. But it's gotta be straight in this direction, and then in the other direction too. Now then when that looks good, then what I'll do is I'll take my usual thin ambroid, or you could use Duco, and I'll just put some on it. This is just tack gluing it, really, because we're going to CA it. Okay, so here I just want to smear a little on the end there. And then that's why it's always nice to have toothpicks, because you just wipe off the excess. Okay, and get it on there nice, like that. There, and fingers come in handy for that, too. And then I'm just going to check it again to make sure, all right, that it looks good. And then let it dry, let it set. And uh, I think that looks good. And in this direction, I think that looks good. So then let just let it dry. Now, once you let it dry, then what you could do is remember the wire sticks in about an eighth inch. You can cut it off. And I already did that right here. Okay? 
So that's what you end up with. This one's been sitting drying. Then what you do is, after you do that, you want to insert it finally into the tube. All right, and you got to be careful with this. And I may not be able to do this on camera here because uh, it's just tricky to do all these things at once. But I know it fits in there, and so once I get it going, whoops, a little piece came off, that's okay. All right, took off a little piece, that's fine. Let me get rid of that. This was a pretty tight fit. There, there we go, we got it. So now I'm just going to push it in, look at that, until it's flat. And if you hold it up, you get to watch it because I'm squeezing, see, before you cyanide the tube, it's delicate. I'm going to hold it up to the light. Oh yeah, that's nice to make sure I still have enough there for the prop. So there you go. Now this is your last chance. You got to really check it and make sure everything's perfect. Then I'm going to hold it like this. I've shown you this before over the towel. I'm going to hit it with a good drop of CA. Now the thing you got to be careful about is you don't want to fill up the middle, so make sure you keep your toothpick and you keep it empty. All right? Okay, so I got this one pretty well aligned there, and now I'm ready to do the CA soaking. So hold it down like this, and again, do this over a paper towel, and uh, make sure you get it on both sides. Got to be pretty well soaked there. There you go. Then tap it out. Okay, that gets rid of stuff in the middle. Make sure you have your trusty toothpick <clears throat> with you. And there it is. I'm just going to make sure I don't have any buildup. <clears throat> Excuse me, on the inside there. And it should look real shiny and wet like that, all right, because uh, that's important, okay? And it should soak into the balsa well. I'm going to give it another little shot here on the end just to be sure. There you go, and then I'll soak it off. I really want to make sure. So that's why I leave the, uh, you know, the tube, uh, the tissue tube, I don't do it. I like to do it when the balsa, the wire, and the tissue are all together, just one big soak, and I think that does the trick. It just binds it together really nice and I've never had any problems with this. I'm going to check the inside again because sometimes you might get a little buildup of fluid. It'll just decrease how far in you can go with the prop shaft. But that looks good. So now I'm going to let it dry. Just take a little magnet there, you see. Let it hang out there and I'm going to put that aside. Okay. <clears throat> now I already did that with this one so let me show you the next part. So the next part is, so what we did is we sanded this to length so that the driver sits in there correctly. Now you got to do that with the end of the tube because as I said, I left that a little bit over. So I already did one for you. You can almost see this one's a little too long. What you want to do is you want to sand it so that, well, you have to do a couple things at once. First, you slip this in and you see how much it's sticking out and that'll let you know to trim it, right? You got to trim this wire to length, okay? Then I see how it sits, and I shouldn't pull this in and out too much because it's tough to get it in there. There you go. I mean, behind the camera. I'm behind the camera. <clears throat> so what I did is, it was sitting there like that, all right? But you want it to be exactly perpendicular for that hole there. So I just sanded it a little at a time, kept sanding it, and now you can kind of see, look at that. When it's all the way in, it's nice and vertical and it goes right to where the hole is and that's exactly what you want to do and you can even check it by slipping it in there if you want and it's not bending it or putting any stress on it that's important okay this way you can freely pivot back and forth you see so when the other one dries I'm gonna do that with the other side and we're almost there I, I can't believe how many <laughs> uh, frames this took I did like 30 little segments but I wanted to show you every single step of what I do and that's pretty much what I'm doing. So we're almost done. I'm going to do the other side. We still have to make the spring. So I'm going to show you that next. And then we'll assemble the whole thing and we're done. So I did the other side. And as you can see, it sits really nice now. They're both nice and square here. And also it should just be free and completely loose, you see, in terms of going back and forth. Okay. Um, let me mention a couple other things. I mount this. So when you put this on, what I did is I made the hole. I think I used a 0.5 millimeter drill. And um, then I slid it on about halfway. And then I just used, again, a little bit of the gelled CA, a little toothpick. I put a little there and a little there. And then you got to line it up. Do it when the shaft's in, you see? So you make sure it's square and it's in the middle. Okay, and then I let that dry. And I also put it in so that uh, the one hole is facing forward 
on the right side and the two holes are on the other side. All right, I didn't put in the screw yet for the spring. We're gonna get to that now. Okay, the other thing I wanna mention is for this wire here, make sure you use .020. I made one where I used .015. Now the inside of this tubing is point, uh, oh, uh, what is it? It's O20, okay? That's the inside of the tubing, uh, but the .015 wire was too loose and the props moved around too much, I didn't like it. The .020 wire will just fit in, okay, and that's what you should use. It's nice and smooth. You might make sure when you cut it and you trim it, you deburr the end with a file. Just deburr it so, and then it'll actually turn nice and easy and nice and smooth in there, okay? So now we're going to make this spring. And for the spring these days, I'm using .012 wire. That seemed to work. So first you make a little thing like this. This is a piece of hardwood. This is .039. Now the outside of the tubing is .039, so it's a kind of snug fit. To be honest with you, if I had .040 wire, I would have used that, but I didn't have it. I only had this. The next one I had was .047, and I think that's just a little too loose. And so I bend the wire like this so I can either just drill a hole and mount it, epoxy it on there. Then I drill a hole for the screw and I keep a little wing nut there so I can hold that, put the wire under it and tighten it with a screwdriver, okay? Then you need this. This is just a 16th inch brass tube and you have to make a little tooth on the end, if you can see. I just kind of file it down so there's a little tooth on the end, okay? And then that's what goes grabs the wire and wraps it around so you put it on now i wrap wrap counterclockwise all right so this is 0.012 wire and what i'm using is four turns basically and just to get started here you go you see if you start twisting it around you can see it's just coming around and i like to hold it and look i'm moving it up a little bit so it goes over the screw now, I'm not going to do the whole thing on camera because what I like to do, you can start to see the wire there, is I put on my magnifying head glasses and I go very carefully to get four neat wraps. So I'm going to do that now. I can't do that with the camera in front of me. Okay, so what I actually did was three wraps here, counterclockwise. All right, now I'm going to take this off. And oh yeah, and also I leave it at about a 90 degree angle like that because what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this make a bend on the top piece here to go into the screw and then the bottom piece just hooks on to the driver bar. All right, so we gotta take it off of this to do that and I'll show you that. All right, so I got the wire off. And one thing I do is, so this is the leg that's gonna hook on the driver bar. So I bend it down, you know, I take my pliers about an eighth inch here, a little more. I bend it down and then forward, because that's going to kind of hook over the bar. And I'll probably trim that back a little further. I just want to check it first. And then what I do is actually slip it onto the shaft there, okay? And uh, so I can figure out now to bend it to have it go into the screw. And you can see, look at that, it fits right on the shaft, really nice. So now the other screw is going to come in here, so I have to bend it at a right angle I, I do it curved and then it goes into a little hole in the screw so that's the part I have to do next now the way I do that is I take one of the screws and I leave the head on later on I'm going to cut it off and I just embed it push it into a little piece of scrap balsa and then the same with the other side so there you go so it's sitting there nice and then I just have to drill a little hole in the end so that the wire can go in. Now the wire is 0.012, so I'm gonna use a 0.3 millimeter drill, okay? You don't go in very much, maybe a 16th of an inch at most. It's just so the wire can get anchored in there, okay? So I'm gonna drill that. Okay, so we got the hole drilled here in the screw for the spring, there it is. And then I slipped the spring in there, and then you can see I kind of bent it like round, so it'll go right into that hole that's in the front. It's not in it now, I just have it in position. Okay, so we're pretty much ready to put the whole thing together. I don't know if I can do this live, but we'll try. Now let me, first we gotta get the driver. All right, and I have that mark, so I know which side is which, because you did it custom for, one, for each side, so I make sure I put it in the same way. Okay, so I'm gonna slip that in. And then you'll see what I did to make it a little easier. 
I made one side longer than the other here all right on these so in other words you can get this one you can get this in the hole first it just makes it a little easier and then we'll get it in the uh, center hole which is right here there you go so that one's in then it's easy to get this one in there there we are and you push it all the way up now I don't have the spring loaded okay don't load the spring we'll do that later you push it all the way up and then all I do is I get a little bit of carbon, uh, not carbon, uh, Teflon tubing. And uh, so here I had some 0.022 inner diameter. And you put that on the end. This is how you actually lock it all in place. Push it down as right up as far as you can go. This one stays together real nice. If it's not staying together, then get a little clamp like that and go like that just to keep it as tight as possible. And then believe it or not, all I actually do, so let me make sure everything's ready, spring's ready to go, and it's in the correct position. Okay, so all I have to do is pull back this leg to lock it in. I'll do that later. So now I'm making sure it's all the way up and everything's all the way up. And then all you do is you take a little bit of Ambroid. You really want to make sure you get it on the wire there because once it hardens on the wire, that'll keep the front end from coming off. You don't need a big dot or anything. Just enough like that. There you go. That's probably good. All right. Now that you got to be careful. I let that sit for at least a good hour. You want that to get nice and hard and before you start playing around with it. Okay. So we're almost there. I uh, will do a few other things. Oh, let me show you this while I have it. I wanted to show the alternative. So I made this hub. And again, the nice part about doing the screw holder this way is you can make a dozen of them, right? Once you got one of them made. But I did try another one, and here it is. I'll show you this. All I did is I took two strips of bass, a, 30, a 20th inch thick bass, about a 16th inch wide, soaked them in water, then I laminated the two of them together, and it's really crude. I didn't even, I didn't know if it was gonna work, so I just bent them around a quarter inch glass rod, just taped the legs, they came out longer, and let the whole thing dry. Then I put a little piece of balsa in the center, then I made the two holes on the side and another hole over there, threaded it, and then I CA'd the whole thing. And there you go. There's a perfectly usable screw holder, super low tech. You don't need anything, just some bass strip and a little balsa and, of course, the tap and the screws. It's actually lighter than the, these, but that doesn't matter for a penny plane. I need nose weight. If you do an F1D, this is going to be lighter, I think, than if you make these. So that's an alternative that doesn't require anything, really. Very simple to do. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry for a while, then we'll do the next part. All right, so here it is. It's all dry, okay? It's pretty amazing that only just that drop of glue is holding this whole thing together. I was a little worried with penny plane because I'm using an eighth inch rubber. That's gigantic by indoor standards. But I've had dozens of flights and there aren't any problems, so that keeps it together. Now you can see I trimmed off the ends here a little bit and then finally I put the spring on so what you do is you pull this leg back and hook it over the side so now you got tension on the spring and then get a pair of needle nose pliers and uh, you know I grabbed the other part and I made sure that it went into the screw okay so now it's cocked and you can see it's in low pitch and there you go I can twist it in the high pitch now what's interesting is <clears throat> when I finished it the first time I know the feel and I went, uh oh, it's too stiff. And I had to go back and check my penny plane hub. And I thought I had used three turns. That's what I said in the earlier segment of the video, but I actually used four and a half turns. It was too stiff with three turns. I, I knew it right away. And I looked and I saw I actually used four and a half turns. And so I redid the spring. The four and a half turns makes it a little weaker. Uh, otherwise it goes into low pitch too soon. So this seemed to be just about right. So I redid the spring using four and a, about four and a half turns. Okay? So the final part is getting in the prop blades. All right, and the first thing I did is I trimmed them to length. So they have to be exactly eight and a half inch for each prop. All right? And uh, then when that was done, I uh, basically I used, this is my little prop jig here, and I, I have the screw almost all the way in low pitch. It's not totally in low pitch, but it's almost all the way. All right, and um, that's where I set the pitch. And actually on this, it's pretty low because you have quite a, 
wide range. I'm actually doing the lowest at 12, which is incredibly low, but you can go up to over 50 with this, okay? So, uh, the, once I get both blades glued, then I put little drops of glue, like right around here. You gotta take it easy with this because you wanna be able to soak it with a little acetone and replace the blades, okay, if you need to. And so I just put a few little drops of glue and kind of smooth it out. And that's more than enough to hold it in. Take it easy on the glue with that, all right? And then the final thing is that I put on two washers. It's nice to put on two because if you just have one, it's on the two surfaces. It's better to have the two washers rubbing against each other. That's less friction. So I put on two Teflon washers, uh, <laughs> washers and then we're ready to go, okay? Uh, Tomorrow is actually Wednesday, so I'm going to be going flying. So I'm going to look forward to giving this prop a shot here. Let's see how it goes. Uh, these are new blades I just made, and these are 26, and they have a little washout in the tip at 22. And I tried a 28, 26. I thought it was good. So I'm really curious to see how this does, and we'll find out tomorrow when I go flying. So this worked out well. All right, so I, now I have three new penny plane props ready to go. Well, this one has been around, and the other two are new. And here they are in the slider ready to go. Okay, so we're going to give those a shot tomorrow. Now, uh, I just want to say a few words about the F1R VP Hub, okay? So here's the penny plane. You can see the F1R is considerably smaller, all right? But it's pretty much exactly the same. So once again, I have a shaft and a driver. It's, now the shaft is 0 .009 inch wire. The driver is only a millimeter thick. You can see it's smaller. It's 10 millimeters long. So everything is reduced in size. Then I have a T-bar, except this is with the 0.028 wire, 0.011 on the inside. Okay, but again, I make it exactly the same as I did with the penny plane. Then here's the rolled tubes, except now they're 0.040. Okay, and uh, the only thing that's really different is that I don't use the driver, the screw holder, because even when I made smaller versions of this, you can only get it so light. And I should mention, by the way, that the penny plane prop weighed 360 milligrams, which is fine. I need nose weight anyway. Okay, and that's pretty much what the last one weighed. But when you're doing F1R, it's a little bit different because there's no weight limit, so you want it as light as possible. So my F1R uh, weighs a half a gram, 0.5 grams. And so, of course, I don't want to add too much weight. All right, so besides using the smaller components, I use less thread, just a few of them, and I don't wrap you know, I wrap it just a little bit, not as much, and I use just small dots of glue. You gotta take it easy with the glue. All these little things to try to make it as light as possible. And I don't use the screw holder, I just use a piece of balsa like that, a little square. So what I do is I cut the square, it's like a 16 thick, and then I drill a hole and then I tap it, okay? Then I soak it with CA. Now do that before you attach it. I tried it afterwards, believe me, it's always a mistake. The carbon fiber tubing is too porous and it just soaks in. So I put it with uh, the you know thin CA, soaked it, and then I just glued it onto the bar right there with a little bit of the gelled CA. And then you can see I put the screw in, drilled the little hole, and there's the wire. It's a slightly different layout, but the wire goes into the screw again so you could tighten it. And it hooks on the bottom as well here. Okay, so it's just everything is the same except it's totally reduced. And for the screw holder, I just use, uh, you know, this little piece of bolts. That's the lightest possible. Now for the stops, you just use a piece of, I have .01 wire here. Okay, and that's what I use for the stops. You can see it's in low pitch now, or hopefully you can see. And there you go, there's high pitch. This is more than enough for uh, F1R. All right, it's quite a pitch change. Okay. So this one turned out at 68 milligrams. That about, it seems to be about as light as I can get it. I'm not sure what else I could reduce. The way I could get it a little lighter is to use 008 wire instead of 009. I did that for this and also for the little mounts in here. But I don't like that because at height, when you got the rubber fully wound, those 008 hooks will actually pull out sometimes. They'll start coming out. I don't like that. And that doesn't happen with the 009. So I'm just gonna bite the bullet at 68 milligrams and that's, that's good enough, all right? It still keeps me relatively light. So that's the F1R hub. I would suggest start with something like the penny plane first. It's a lot bigger and it's a little easier. 
And then if you get ambitious, the F1R really made a big difference, this hub on my plane, okay? All right, so I'm probably not gonna be making any hubs for a while because I've got a bunch now, so this video will actually help me because I just forget how I do things, so it's good to document it. Um, I hope it helps you too. I, I've really enjoyed you know, uh, getting into the VP. Last, years ago, I was kind of turned off by it because it seemed too high tech. All right, now I don't want to have to get a lot of equipment stuff, but you can make relatively simple ones, and uh, I think it's really good. Now, if you have machinery and machinist skills, boy, these guys make some spectacular hubs. You should look around. There's a lot of articles on this. But this is just very simple. You don't need much to do it, and so it should help get you going. Here's me. What am I doing? Jeez, I hope I don't hit that light. Woo! Tom's, Tom's all right. He's coming down now. Here he is. Good flights. I don't know what I'm doing with this VP. It's tricky. I hope I'm not, I don't think I'm climbing anymore. It went around like at five feet for a while. It's so weird. And then it finally went up. Here's Tom, there's me. I have one on that light you see right there. I lost one earlier on the light that it's going by. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The lights are killers. In fact, you might be able to see my wing sticking out. How's Tom doing? I'm just playing death with that light. I don't think I'm going up anymore but you know with this low pitch you never know it could kick in a little more but I think it's I think it's in all the way I hope I just why am I keep hovering towards that light because it knows the other ones on the light and so it wants to go join <laughs> where are you you're coming in that was a good flight Oh, good, I think I'm finally below the light. Yay, I'm below the light, okay. So we both had good flights. Let me get them, you can get them both in frame here a little bit. Where's me? There's me. And there's you. Flying in the armory, there you go. Well, I'm up to seven minutes. All right, I'm going to put this down so I can pay attention.